In this set of tutorials, I'm going to show you how to take jQuery from Codecademy and apply it to your website. And in the end, we're going to end up with a site that looks somewhat like this. Hopefully, it's a little better designed. This is just something I whipped together right before recording this tutorial. But I want to teach you how to uh, do things like have maps show up, disappear, have legends show up, change when you scroll over them, add buttons within the legend that do other things, create draggable objects, and basically a whole variety of different things so that when we start playing with web mapping APIs, this is just an iframe from CardoDB, but when we actually start manipulating the map data in our web browser, that you can design legends that interact with your map. And so that's the main thing you're learning jQuery and JavaScript for, is A, to interact with the web mapping services APIs so you can add data, remove data, do different sorts of things, tweak the map and tailor it to your needs, but also so that you can design your website to interact with your data and with your map itself so that the user can have, have some control over it and you can actually design the features that the user has control over. So that's the goal with these tutorials is to get you caught up enough on jQuery and JavaScript so that when we move into the next step and start playing with map service APIs like Leaflet, you'll be able to uh, manipulate them. All right, so let's get started. In this first demo tutorial, what we're going to do is simply create an HTML page. And I'm going to fast forward this here so you don't have to watch me do this, but what you should do is, uh, in brackets or a text editor of your choice, create a simple HTML page with a, a head and a body, and that's all you'll need. All right, see you in a couple milliseconds. Okay, so you should end up with something that looks like this, and you should save it as index in a new folder of some sort. Now, what I want to do is, uh, in brackets, what I'm going to do is open up this folder. Save, all right. So I'm going to open this folder, and what we see is we just have our simple index file, and let's add a JavaScript folder. So in the folder of your website, add a new folder, name it JS, and what the heck, let's add another new folder and call it CSS, and what the heck, let's add another new folder and call it Images. So any image on our website, we're going to save in the Images folder, any CSS file will save in the CSS folder, and any J JavaScript file will save in the JavaScript folder. But at this point, we still only have one file. It is the um, index, and it's loose in our website folder. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to add J a jQuery script to our web page so that we can actually access a lot of these um, features of jQuery in our in our website. So. Let's go to jQuery.com. And let's download jQuery. All right, now there's a bunch of stuff you can download here, and it gets a little bit confusing at times, and that's OK. So let's look here. We have jQuery 1x, and we have jQuery 2x. Um, we're going to download jQuery 2x, um, and we're going to download the min version, so the compressed version. So let's download this, and it's going to come like this, and let's show in Finder. Let's double click this. Unzip it. Actually, it's not zipped. Sorry, it's just a jQuery file. Okay, so we have this jQuery file. And let's copy it into our JS folder. Like so. All right. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to go back to brackets. And down here we're going to write script source. And in brackets, you get the folder options. We saved it in the JS folder. It shows us all the files in there, of which there is only one. We close this out, and voila, we now have jQuery will be an option in our um, website. There's one other script, though, I'd like you to download, and this isn't exactly intuitive, 
there is a jQuery UI script. And so if you don't go to jQueryUI.com, you won't get this. But the jQuery user interface script basically has a bunch of different neat things like date pickers, where the calendar pops up, menus, progress bars, a bunch of different things you can add in your website, sliders, tool tips, really cool stuff. So let's download this library too. We're going to use it. Um, I don't want a custom download. I just want a stable download. Let's do that. And this one is zipped. So let's look in here. And as you'll see in, in this one, what you get are a bunch of different images that you can use, icons, etc. Let's see if I can show you what these look like. Ah. So they have um, icons that you can basically use as images, etc. They have CSS for styling, different elements, default stylings. So what we're going to do here, if you actually open their the index that comes in the zip file, it'll show you everything you can do. Although I don't know where it went, so what the hey? Open with Google Chrome. Hmm. It's not cooperating. But um, you can preview them all. Alright, so what we're going to do then is we are going to copy the uh, jQuery UI min.js and put it in our JS folder. You can copy over the CSS, you can copy over the, the icons, etc. It doesn't really matter if you want to use some of those features, you'll need to do that, but we're only going to be using some um, event features, so I don't need to copy all those things. All right, let's go back to brackets. Let's type in our script. Remember that order is important with JavaScript. I'm not sure, but my hunch is that jQuery UI probably depends upon jQuery to run. Maybe not. I'm not sure. But it's probably a good idea to put it second. So we now have both of those scripts. The only thing we need to add at this point is our own script file, which we haven't written yet. So what I'm going to do is go to File New, type that, hit return once maybe, Control shift s or command shift s save this into our javascript folder and we'll just call this script.js go back to index blam you're set up so JavaScript or jQuery will work on the site now and any JavaScript that we write in our script file or jQuery as well should work. And now we can add content. We can add a header, we can add divs, we can add iframes or whatnot, but the main point is our scripts are set up, we're linked. We should also, before we get going though, create a CSS file and I'll do that right now. You'll link to this in the head um, well, let's see, is this, uh, hmm, getting confused. Let's create a new CSS f file. Let's say body. Save this in the CSS folder. We'll call it style.css. All right, great. Hit save. Go back to index. Link href equals style. 
Excel sheet. There we go. Um, I think that's in the wrong order officially. I'll place this last just in case. Hit save. And there's one other thing I'd like to show you. Um, the default fonts aren't that great in in web mapping and website design. So we're going to use some of Google's free online fonts. So let's do this really quickly. Just type Google fonts into your browser. You'll be shown a page where Google has posted hundreds if not thousands of free fonts. You can find a couple different types here. It's up to you. What we're going to go for is I'll just grab a random one. Actually, let me type. Let's go with Roboto Slab here. So if we just um, click the middle one here, Quick Use, what it'll say is, do you want the normal? Yes. Do you want the bold? Eh, that's all right. If I get the bold, it'll t make the page take longer to load. All right, I'll take the bold too. Why not? Choose the character set. I don't need Greek or anything. I don't need Latin extended as far as I know. Basically, all we have to do is go down here, add this code to our website. And then to add it to our CSS, it tells you what to type, Roboto Slab in quotes. Perfect. It's this easy to get really cool and fun fonts on your website. In the head below the CSS link, we will copy and paste the Google link there. We now have this font. It will load this font from Google in our website. I'll hit save. I will go to style CSS. I will say font family. This shouldn't be B, by the way. This should be body. I don't know what I was thinking. Roboto slab. If not that, Helvetica is nice. If not that, Corbel, Arial, Sans Serif. All right, let's hit save. Let's do the index thing. Let's open this up. And voila, we have no text. Um, we do have a black background with a body with a white background. Very nice. Let's add a div with an ID of header. This will be where we put all of our fun header sort of stuff. And I'm just going to add an h1 tag in here. Hit save. There we go. Roboto slab. Our, our body's working, etc. That ends part one of this lesson. Basically, what, what did we do here? In brackets, we created a CSS file that's linked. We know it's working because the text is in Roboto, Roboto slab. We added a font from Google. We know that's working because that is Roboto slab. And we also linked to jQuery, the jQuery user interface um, library, and our own JavaScript library. So anything we add to our own JavaScript library will work, and we can use all of the features of jQuery and the jQuery user interface libraries. So we're basically well under our way. From now on, we can just start creating, which is the fun part. So I'll see you in the next step. Thanks for watching.